What is up guys? It's your boy, Father Kakis. And today we've got some brand spanking new Destiny 2 news, courtesy of the Bungie weekly update that has just gone live, revealing official information. And so, let's get started. Now, first things first, guys, I have a bit of an announcement. I am streaming for the first time since Destiny 1, right here on YouTube, starting this Saturday at 12 p.m. Pacific. I hope you guys can tune in. We're gonna do some dungeon carries and all that stuff. It should be a ton of fun. Now, Talking about what happened in Destiny this week, not too much in game, but certainly the big news outside of that was that Sony purchased Bungie for $3.6 billion. That's a lot of money. Now, Bungie actually did come out with some statements saying that they're going to maintain a multi-platform game. So I think a lot of people were worried, oh my goodness, are there gonna be Sony and PlayStation exclusive exotics? You know, the Hawkmoon was on PlayStation only for like over a year. So Bungie came out and said, no, that's not really gonna be the case. We maintain basically full uh, creative control and all of that stuff. And actually one of the main things that's come out since this purchase is that Sony Sony has said, we're gonna use some of the other things we have. Like when people think Sony, they think PlayStation, but there's also uh, Sony Entertainment making movies, Sony Music, and Sony is gonna use those things to promote the Destiny IP. So Destiny TV show, Destiny movie, that just became very possible. And $3.6 billion is a lot of money that Bungie can use to hopefully grow the studio and bring even more content and improvements to the Destiny franchise. But guys, moving on from there, let's talk about the information within the actual TWA, but just before we do, you know what's cool? Tanks. You know what's also cool? Fighter jets. You know what's also cool? Warships. Imagine being so cool you combine all of these and more into one ultimate war extravaganza. Well, that's today's sponsor, War Thunder. It's so much cool, it'll make your head explode. Guys, War Thunder is a multiplayer game available on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. It has over 2,000 models of military vehicles from 10 different nations, and it's completely free to play. That's right, you get a huge diversity of vehicles, in-depth customization for those different vehicles, a bunch of different locations from ruined cities to deserts to jungles. You can either be fighting in those with crazy tank battles or from up above with awesome aviation battles. And your boy's gonna hook you up because if you click the link in the description down below, you get unique vehicles, three days of a premium account. And if you already have a premium account, you get unique vehicles as well. So it's great for new and old players of War Thunder. Guys, it's such a crazy game. Absolutely worth your time to check it out. Completely free, so there's absolutely no downside. You might just find your new favorite game. Click the link in the description down below. All right, so right off the bat, we have some huge information. Bungie actually goes in depth with how the crafting system is going to work within the Witch Queen. The location you're going to discover where you do your weapon crafting is called the Enclave. There's going to be a beginning intro quest where you go and craft your first glaive, which is going to be that brand new special melee weapon archetype that is coming within the Witch Queen. Bungie says a subset of weapons and archetypes will be craftable from the start, but more will be added in the future. They say, in order to shape your future tools of destruction, you'll need to do a little bit of research first. Patterns are your first requirement. Some will be acquired through quest completions, while others can be earned by completing various gameplay objectives. Once you've earned your desired pattern, it can be crafted at any time with the required materials. So here is an image from that crafting system. We can see it's going to be a high impact auto rifle. We have the desired perks kind of in the middle, we have some required materials, and then kind of the output showcasing its stats and so on. But how are you going to be able to specify the perks that you want? Well, after you get that first glaive with that initial quest, randomly rolled weapons throughout the game have a chance to drop with a new ability, Deep Sight Resonance. And you're gonna be able to denote those because they're gonna have a red border as you can see right here. So let's say you find a Deep Sight Resonance Red Bordered Legendary Auto Rifle and it has the Rampage perk. So you can create an objective and extract the essence 
of the perk and then you can use that to craft a weapon with rampage or another perk that increases damage so here we see an example of that so we have this smg here uh, with deep sight resonance that red border and right here you can put on what looks to be a mod and it says use this weapon in combat or to complete activities in order to attune to this resonance and extract materials useful for shaping weapons and here is another screenshot with that Deep Sight Resonance objective kind of mod completed right here. So essentially you get a red bordered weapon and then you equip that Deep Sight Resonance and then utilize that weapon to kind of level it up and complete the Deep Sight Resonance and then you can kind of claim it and presumably dismantle the weapon to use, you know, one of its perks or whatever in crafting a later weapon. So that's gonna kind of be the barrier to entry. You can't just craft the perfect god roll right off the bat. You will need to go and be completing these deep sight resonances to get the perks and the stats you want for your perfect god roll craftable weapon. However, there's also gonna be leveling your weapon and enhanced traits. So once you do craft that weapon, Guardians may begin to increase its level by using it in activities and by defeating enemies. This is where the bulk of your crafting playtime will be. The more you use your weapon, the faster you unlock its full potential. They say enhanced stats and traits can be unlocked when reaching higher levels, granting slight bonuses to your weapon's capabilities. Our goal through this system is to give players a reason to invest in their weapons far beyond what masterworking could offer in the past. Each weapon can now act as a long tail pursuit as you look to make your freshly crafted weapon the best it can be. And here is actually a screenshot of that. So we have that high impact frame auto rifle that we kind of saw previously we can actually see here you know requires level seven so after you level it up all the way to level seven it's presumably you, know, you can see the top there 10 handling so it's going to give like an extra 10 handling to that weapon and then the next you know few levels there's going to be another bonus to some more stats so once you level that all the way up you're going to have a weapon that has you know juiced stats better stats than it initially started with However, what if you make a mistake and craft a weapon you don't actually like using? Well, there's actually two options at the crafting station. You can shape, so create a new weapon, or you can reshape, which is modifying an existing weapon. So Bungie says, in the Enclave, if you want to mix up the components of your weapons after you finish crafting them, you can switch up what barrel, megs, or traits you choose so you don't feel like you got locked down to one path forever. That is absolutely awesome. Now something else being introduced new to weaponry is mementos. So they say while the majority of your crafting will be dedicated to mixing, matching, and enhancing traits, there's also an opportunity to add a bit of customization. So there's going to be activity specific trackers. They say at launch, one memento will become available for players to earn through Gambit, unlocking a Gambit themed appearance and tracker. Rank up your weapon to max level, head back to the Enclave and apply apply your freshly earned memento for some sweet flair. So they say more of these will come online through Trials of Osiris, Grandmaster, Nightfalls, and so on. So that's a cool way to even further customize your weapon and let you show off how juiced you are at farming Gambit, you know? Now, very interestingly, there's also going to be some exotic crafting. So they say the upcoming Ostero Striga exotic SMG and three class unique exotic glaives that we saw during uh, the brand new trailer that's playing in the background right now can also be crafted through the Enclave once you find their respective patterns, of course. Now Bungie says with exotics, it's more about fine tuning something with a defined identity. You will have the opportunity to customize things like barrels or stocks while preserving the exotic look and feel. Looking for a longer range profile for the weapon or opting to shred through your enemies up close and personal through the crafting system, you can do that. And so guys, there you have it, the brand new crafting system. Surface level, it appears a little bit more complicated than it needs to be, but that's everything Bungie introduces. I'm sure we'll get used to it pretty darn quickly. And this is definitely a giant step forward, actually giving the players control over what loot they want. And the leveling system too is something I really didn't expect, but seems like a nice addition. However, moving on from there guys, we have some more huge information about weaponry. 
Bungie actually revealed the brand new Pursuit weapon, so similar to the Null Composure or the Salvenger Salvo coming in Season 16. Now, they did clarify and say, hey, with Pursuit weapons, we kind of want the weapon to be, you know, 70% of an utter god roll, like a better than normal weapon, certainly, but not like the perfect weapon. It's a great start point for new players. You can for sure acquire it and so on. So keeping uh, those ideals in mind, guys, this is the Reckless Endangerment Pursuit Shotgun. This weapon is coming in Season 16 and it introduces the new Steady Hands perk for a massive handling boost after a kill, plus Snapshot. They say there are several other shotguns in the release with more sought after PvP and PvE perks. So again, a great way to introduce a new perk and gonna have to see how good that thing ends up being. But moving on from there guys, something else really exciting is the introduction of Origin Traits. These are essentially a third main perk that's going to spawn on weapons depending on where they drop. You may have actually noticed it in the screenshots I was showing you guys for crafting. As you can see, we have the two barrel perks, the two mag perks, the two main perks, and then hidden under deep sight resonance, you can see there's actually another perk there before the kill counters are on the far side. Again, you can see it hidden under the text right here. So what exactly are these origin traits? Well, here are some examples. For Trials of Osiris weapons, they're gonna have Alacrity or whatever. It says gain increased reload, stability, aim assist, and range when you are the last living member of your fire team or running solo. So here are the stats here. Solo includes solo lost sectors and rumble, for example. Wow, really, really cool trait here. And again, presumably all Trials of Osiris weapons once the Witch Queen launches will have this particular perk. For Nightfall Strikes, you have Stunning Recovery. Stunning a champion partially refills your magazine, triggers health regeneration, and improves recovery for a short duration. So grants 60 health instantly plus 40 recovery for three seconds. Wow, that's gonna be in, like you are going to wanna use Nightfall weapons now anytime you're grinding GMs. That's a huge change. For the Crucible weapons, you have one quiet moment grants increased reload speed when out of combat so there's the stats there another big change then there's strikes you're gonna have vanguard's vindication final blows with this weapon grant a small amount of health which is only seven but still being able to heal a little bit after just killing a group of thralls that's gonna help for grinding strikes. Bungie then says anytime it makes sense due to source activity, a weapon will have multiple origin traits selectable. For example, Nightfall weapons can select between Nightfall and Vanguard traits. Trials of Osiris weapons can select between Trials or Crucible traits. And the Pursuit weapon, that shotgun, can select between Gambit, Vanguard, and Crucible traits since it be, can be acquired from any of those activities. Wow! So huge change in customization. Now it really matters where these weapons are coming from. But guys, that's not all. It's also gonna matter what foundry the weapon belongs to. So if you can remember, foundry are essentially the manufacturers of certain weapons. So Hakka has you know, very distinctive visual themes. There's Omelon weapons, there's Viced weapons, all of that stuff, Suros weapons, and that really hasn't mattered too much until the Witch Queen. So Bungie says, in season 16, we're replacing the old world loot pool with 12 new weapons in the style of Destiny 2's year one foundry weapon sets. Three weapons from uh, Suros, Omelon, Hakka, and the Viced foundries, plus one foundry weapon each for Vanguard, Gambit, and Crucible. So what's so special about a foundry weapon? Well, Bungie says each weapon will come with a foundry origin trait themed around that foundry's personality. So for Suros, you have Suros Synergy. Reloading grants this weapon bonus handling and reduces incoming flinch for a short time. Then for Hakka weapons, you have Hakka Breach Armaments. This weapon deals increased damage against vehicles turrets, barricades, and stasis crystals. So there you go right there. Now for Omelon, you have Omelon Fluid Dynamics. This weapon has increased reload speed and stability for the top half of the magazine. So there are the stats. And then Vice, you have Vice Stinger. Chance on damage to partially refill this weapon's magazines. So again, they say in addition to the Foundry Origin trait, 
Each foundry weapon's perk pools lean into the foundry's identity. Big damage for Haka, consistency for Suros, and ability tie-ins and weird stuff for Omelon. And never stop firing for Vice. Guys, actually here are the pictured shot, uh, Vanguard shotgun, crucible hand cannon, and gambit auto rifle, again belonging to each one of those different foundries. And remember guys, what applies to these three weapons is that foundry weapons that drop from a source aside from the world pool can switch between the foundry trait and the sources trait. And this doesn't apply if the foundry weapons will be common outside the world pool. But essentially what it's saying is, hey, that Vanguard shotgun, which is Suros, you can either pick the Suros trait or you can pick the Vanguard Strikes trait that we looked at earlier. You can swap between those depending on what you want. In fact, Bungie says, for example, a roll on the new Gambit Haka high impact frame auto rifle might look like this. Corkscrew rifling and polygonal rifling, armor piercing rounds or flared magwell, and then perpetual motion, focus fire. Focus fire is returning. That's a, a perk where if you aim down sights, it's going to slow your rate of fire, but increase your damage. That's pretty darn cool. Then there's invader tracker, which is the gambit origin trait. And then Haka breach armaments, which is the Haka origin trait. So you can choose between the gambit trait or the Haka trait, and you're gonna have a kill tracker and a range masterwork. So a lot of customization, a lot of weapon changes coming in the Witch Queen. Now guys, moving on from there, we have some huge balancing changes. So globally, uh, kill trackers are not gonna be tied to mast working because mast working is no longer gonna produce orbs. It's still gonna give you a stat boost. Uh, now mods for legendary weapons are instant and free to equip. Also for special weapons in the Crucible, a lot of complaints now, players will only drop one special ammo on death or equivalent. So no matter how much you are carrying, the maximum you can pick up uh, for from a special brick is one for a shotgun fusion rifle or sniper or equivalent weapons scavenger mods add uh, to this as normal but they're going to be evaluating in the future but moving on from there guys some balancing changes they say the season 15 fusion rifle rework had a lot of moving parts and it certainly changed fusion rifles so what they're doing now is they've increased high impact fusion rifle damage per bolt from 62 to 64 so it's not a lot but it should help with consistency increased high impact fusion rifle pve damage bonus from 15 percent to 20 percent. so high impacts are really underused hopefully this helps the next thing they're doing here is they've reduced the blinding and concussion grenade damage by 25 percent so obviously blinding grenades so good for utility especially in pve but they also did a lot of damage so this is kind of reining them back a little bit then for rocket launchers so the damage is adjusted by subfamily so precision rockets 0.95 times so a bit of a nerf high impact no change one times adaptive a little bit of a buff 1.05 times and aggressive again a little bit of a buff 1.05 times so just some pretty minor changes but right now all of the rocket launchers do the same damage so this is actually going to matter quite a bit when now picking the best rocket launcher then for sniper rifle aim assist guys they've reduced the variance in aim assist scaling uh, between low 35 zoom and high zoom 60 zoom sniper rifles so the cone angle scaler increased by about 25 percent on low zoom and reduced by about nine percent on high zoom and i think what they're saying here is it's not as massive uh, of a gap so like no aim assistance on low zoom mega aim assistance on high zoom they're kind of making it so it's not as different from one another then and pulse rifles uh they're taking a little too long to kill red bar enemies in pve so they're buffing their damage versus miners by 10 percent but if you want exotic pulse rifles to feel better than this oh boy keep reading okay so guys let's get on it's it's a huge twop day oh my god but let's get on to those exotic weapon changes so exotic primary weapons and trace rifles aren't sufficiently stronger than legendaries for them to be worth using so here's what's happening they're going to increase damage versus miners in pve by 40 percent so every single exotic primary is going to be absolutely destroying red bars uh, within pve that's a big change so chaperone they've reduced the passive range buff from two meters to 0.5 meters to dial that down a bit 
So for duality, similar to the chaperone, so they reduce the passive range buff in slug mode from 1.25 meters to 0.5 meters, and the on black wings damage buff no longer clears on reload. So the Teraba, ooh, it's been a long time, guys, but now it reduces the perk progress by half instead of clearing it on weapon stow, and they increased the Ravenous Beast duration. It increases for damaging a player slightly. So more effective in PvP for, again, damaging other players, and you can, you know, whip out your shotgun and kill something, and you're only going to lose half of that uh, Ravenous perk instead of having to start all over again. So never saw, thought I'd see it, but Terrible buff. Then for the Ruinous Effigy, guys, uh, it's been long overdue for a buff. They increase the damage dealt by uh, guarding with the Transmutation Sphere by 66% and 30% against players. And the multi-kills now count for orb generation on armor, and previously this would not work. Then for the Lumina, guys, they increase the range from 44 to 59. That's pretty insane. Then they increase the stability from 46 to 56. And they say, sorry for Thorn fans. Thorn is already strong and popular. And a similar buff would just be a little bit too much. So, wow. <laughs> More Lumina mains might come out of the woodwork here. For the Augur's Scepter, they fixed being able to activate or continue uh, using Empowering Mode while suppressed or stasis encased. They rebuilt the perk. So, used to modify Super Charge Rate, now freezes Super Recharge and deducts Super directly, fixing several issues with activities that change charge rate and outliers for recharge based on the intellect stat and super should now drain more slowly while empowered moving on from there the dead man's tail they reduced the catalyst hip fire rate from 150 to 130 huge that i mean that's gonna kill it i mean the reason you were using it the re in hip fire was it was 150 it was absolutely insane so uh, that's a huge nerf to the dmt Moving on, the Lorentz Driver, they actually increase the amount of flinch you receive if you're using the Lorentz Driver, presumably from absolutely nothing to hopefully something. And then for the Forerunner, uh, the, they increase the ammo pickup from a special ammo brick from 2 to 3 and from 4 to 5 with a Scavenger mod. Wow. But guys, that's not quite it for Legendary Weapons. They say several Legendary Weapons have out-of-band stats and it's created a bunch of outliers, both good and bad. So for hand cannons, uh, obviously the 150s that ended up being 140s, they're not doing too well. So here is a list of all the different previously 150 hand cannons that became 140s and they did get left behind, so they're getting those different stat buffs. Moving on to the Felwinter's Lie, uh, it's gonna get a plus 15% angle spread, so it's not gonna be as nutty, and they say most of the Achilles SMG stats are wildly out of band for an aggressive SMG, so here are the changes there. You'll notice like less stability, basically they're nerfing the Achilles SMG. Why? You already nerfed Warmind Cells, come on. Moving on from there, here are the perk buffs and nerfs. So, Hipfire Grip now increases damage falloff start and end distance by 20%, except on shotguns, sniper rifles, and fusion rifles. Adagio, a brand new perk introduced this season, uh, it's going to increase the duration from 5 seconds to 7 seconds, and they increase the damage bonus except on bows and fusion rifles from 25% all the way to 30%, and it now adds plus 10 to the range stat. And they added a timer to the buff text to make it easier to tell when it's going to expire. Then dual loader. What they've done is they've reduced the reload stat penalty from minus 50 to minus 35. So now only getting minus 35 and reloading two shells at a time, maybe people will use that now. Danger Zone felt pretty risky, so they've reduced the self damage scaler for grenade launchers combined with other scalers. Uh, this ends up reducing self damage from 1.25 times to 0.75 times. So, Danger Zone, you can use it much, close, much closer quarters and not kill yourself. Then, with tap the trigger, they say it's pretty meta breaking with fusion rifles in particular. So, they say on fusion rifles, 
only. Uh, they reduced the stability bonus from plus 40 to plus 10. They changed the max recoil uh, scale angle. They changed the error angle scale and it's unchanged in other weapons. So specifically, if you have a fusion rifle with tap the trigger, it's gonna be nerfed. Head Seeker. So they said it didn't work as intended on aggressive uh, burst pulse rifles because the duration was just too short. So the Sacred Providence is the only kind of viable pulse rifle. So they said they extended the buff duration from 0.17 uh, to 0.3 seconds. Essentially, on those aggressive pulse rifles, it's now going to matter a lot more and again, potentially uh, be able to get you some kills if you get some body shots mixed in there. And then... Eager Edge, okay, Eager Edge has been completely changing the game, evolved speed running because it absolutely yeets you forward, but they say they reduced the lunge distance benefit while airborne by 25%, now caps maximum player airborne velocity to a fairly high value while active, so apparently you'll still be able to use it to yeet around, just not to the degree you can right now. So they say occasionally we'll, sh we'll shelve perks, because they're not working for some reason, too strong or too weak. So here are the perks that are going away for a while. So Bottomless Grief and Celerity, and both were attempts to introduce some uniqueness to Trials and Nightfall, but obviously with the introduction of the new origin traits that are also coming for Nightfall and Trials weapons, makes sense they're going away. Underdog is not gonna spawn anymore, thank goodness, absolute dog water perk that spawns on everything. Shield Disorient, and lastly, Air Assault. They say, note, this may get a redesign in a future season. So there you go, guys. Those perks, I mean, potentially they're still going to stay on weapons that have them, but future weapons will not spawn them. And guys, oh my goodness, last thing to talk about is in the near future, Bungie gives a preview of what's happening in Season 17. They say in Season 17, so the season after the Witch Queen, we'll have a set of PvP-focused weapon changes, including new ways for players to build for flinch resistance, balance tuning for primary weapons, looking at you, pulse rifles, lightweights in particular, special weapon tuning, snapshot feeling mandatory on sniper rifles and PvP and other changes, uh, another PvP special ammo economy change if needed, adjusting how zoom outliers, both low and high affect performance of weapons. And then lastly, we are also adjusting several much requested exotics along with legendary perks. Oh my goodness, guys. That brings us to the end of what just might be the biggest TWAB ever. And the repercussions are absolutely massive. Like all your weapons are changing. Those origin perks make such a difference, like providing healing benefits in PvE, big stat boosts for PvP, all of that stuff. Like the meta, we were trying to predict what the meta was going to be, but I think at this point, it's almost unpredictable. Obviously a good idea to get certain weapons and prepare for the future, but really with weapon crafting, origin perks, all this stuff, it is going to feel like a completely different game when it comes to using weapons and getting weapons and going after god rolls within the Witch Queen, and I'm very excited. Guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.